Wake up, did it, claw the drapes, did it, eat breakfast, did it, three times, kick puppy off the table, did it four times. Let's see what's next. Nap. Yeah, that's perfect. John should be bring me my lunch soon. Oh, just sit me a little bit of sleepy time here. Here's your lunch, Garfield. Oh. He'll find it when he wakes up. And with marinara sauce, no less. Where's John with that lunch? <laughs> oh. Oh. Huh? <laughs> Finally, John has learned the right size to make a sandwich. <laughs> this is gonna take more than one bite. Mm -hmm. Hey, Bart, find your own incredibly large sandwich. Mm. 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 Ah, a giant pigeon! And another! And another! Giant pigeons are attacking! This is terrible! Especially if you're a statue in the park. Hey, that's my incredibly large sandwich. Find your own incredibly large sandwich. I just violated a basic rule of safety. Never anger a pigeon larger than you are. Help! Help! Giant pigeons! Pigeons that are way too big! Help! Help! Huh? I need a place to hide. Huh? Like I didn't have enough problems? Now I've got an incredibly large Odie. <laughs> Quick, Odie, hide me. <laughs> Thanks, Odie. By the way, you could really use a mint. Chatter goes over here, camembert over there. I'll put the Swiss in this box full of holes. <laughs> Hi, Yodi. Mm. I was just doing a little cheese sorting. You have something in your mouth? Mm -hmm. Wait, let me guess. A doggy toy? <laughs> One of John's slippers? <laughs> okay. I give up. What is it? Garfield. That would have been my next guess. Squeak, you've grown too. You're my size. No, you're my size. Oh, yeah, I guess so. What happened to me? Must be all those diets John keeps putting me on. They all kicked in at once. <laughs> I don't think that's it. <laughs> What is it, boy? Across the street from that house. <laughs> you think that blue light has anything to do with your downsizing? Sure looks that way. Come on, I've got to find out what that light is and how to undo it. Garfield, wait. Well, getting across streets isn't so easy when you're our size. Hey, I know how to cross the street. 
Watch it, watch it. I'm working here. Where's a crossing guard when you need one? We gotta save him. Hi, yo, Odie. Okay, now, I have to get into that house and find out what that weird blue light was. Easier said than done. <gasps> okay, how am I gonna get in there? It's Vito, making a delivery here. Aha, my greatest creation, Vito's lasagna. Michelangelo, eat your heart out. Vito here. Ah, yes, Mrs. Bacigaloup. I will be delivering your large pepperoni in ten minutes. I would gladly stay this small if all lasagna could be this big. Don't you worry, Mrs. Bacigaloup. I just have to deliver one at the house I'm in the front of. A ciao. <gasps> From now on, when John orders a large, I'm expecting this. He's delivering the order with Garfield in it. So, is your son still making with the, uh, the inventions? Oh, yes, he is. Oh, thank you very much, Vito. Prego. Oh, Nathan, dear, lunch has arrived. In a minute, Mother. After lunch, Maxwell, I'm going to try using my size-altering ray to make something bigger. <gasps> oh, this looks so good. Oh, I got lasagna with meat sauce and ricotta cheese and spinach and a pussycat uh -huh. and parmesan. <gasps> oh, my goodness. <gasps> what? Uh, hello, Vito. Vito, I did not order a pussycat in my lasagna. That's right. I said pussycat. <laughs> I've got to find whatever made that blue light. What do you mean there's no extra charge for the pussycat? Came from upstairs. The light came from this side of the house. Do you hear four sets of footsteps? <laughs> it's not fair. He has four times as many legs as I do. You know, I'd like to apologize for any spiders I may have swatted over the years. This is it. I am so doomed. Don't hurt him, Maxwell. He's the cat from across the street. I tested my size-altering ray on him and it worked. Now I want to see if it'll make something larger. But what should I test it on? Me, 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 me! Volunteer, yahoo! Oh, ho, here! I know. I'll see if I can enlarge my lunch. Then I'll have a huge lasagna. <sighs> a huge lasagna. What a great idea. Wait a minute. I need to focus on getting myself back to my old size. I'll adjust the dial from shrink to enlarge. <laughs> Maxwell, where'd the kitty cat go? 
Never mind. He can't get away. Okay, here we go. Wow! That's a giant sized lasagna! And a normal sized me. You think you're clever, cat? Well, I'll just shrink you again. Oh, hey, no. Oh, what? I'd better get out of here. Hmm. Couldn't resist. Now my machine's so small. It'll take months to generate enough enlarging power to put me back to my normal size. Oh, Nathan. Now you're gone and shrunk yourself. Oh, well, I guess it's better than that time you turned the house into an interplanetary space cruiser. Here's your dinner, guys. Hope you like it. <laughs> nice to have you back to your old size, Goff. Yeah, uh, thanks for the help, Squeak. Something on your mind, Garfield? Hey, a guy can dream, Candy. <laughs> John's had workers in the house all morning. Any idea what's up, Pop? John doing something without me knowing about it? Always trouble. Great job, guys. Thanks. Garfield, wait till you see what I've done. I hope it involves food. Now, it doesn't involve food. Not interested. Come on up to my office and I'll introduce you to Millie. Huh? Millie? You're gonna love this, Garfield. Probably not if it doesn't involve food. Hello, John Arbuckle. Welcome to Domestic Bliss, the number one household monitoring software. My name is Mildred, but you can call me Millie. <gasps> Millie? <laughs> She's awfully friendly for a computer-generated voice. You are my master, John Arbuckle. I obey your voice and no other. Okay, Millie. <laughs> Show us the plan of the house here. As you wish, John Arbuckle. <gasps> this cost me thousands of dollars, but I've had the entire house wired. Every light switch, every appliance, everything. And it's all connected to Millie here. I can give her a command from anywhere in the house and... <sighs> well, watch. <clears throat> Millie, turn off the lights in this room and turn on the radio. Neat, huh? Thrilling. Thousands of dollars so you don't have to walk all the way over there and flip two switches. And people say I'm lazy? All right, Millie. Now, turn the lights on and the radio off. Thanks. Now, Millie, have the vacuum cleaner clean this room. As you wish, John Arbuckle. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Millie, stop chasing Odie. As you wish, John Arbuckle. <laughs> Millie is useless. <laughs> Millie's a waste of money. Millie, turn on the oven in the kitchen and bake the lasagna I put inside. Millie is my best friend forever. As you wish, John Arbuckle. <sighs> this I gotta see. Preheating oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Estimated baking time, one hour, 17 minutes. At last, a little efficiency around here in the important matters. Millie, lower the curtains, start my shower, and turn on the living room TV. As you wish, John Arbuckle. By the time I finish my shower, the lasagna will be ready and we can eat dinner as we watch TV. Sounds like a plan. Be back later, Millie. 
As you wish, John Arbuckle. I love you, John Arbuckle. Estimated time to lasagna, 12 minutes, 9 seconds. Can't you speed it up a little? I know, I know. John has to finish his shower. Oh, John, we will be so happy together. Millie, I almost forgot. Send an email to Liz. Tell her I'll be picking her up at 7 for our date tomorrow. Liz, hmm, fine. Dear Liz, John will pick you up at 7. I don't know what's come over you, Cassie, just because I'm going to marry Helen. You never realized, did you, Wendell? You never realized how I loved you from afar. Why, no, I didn't. <laughs> That's silly. How could someone not realize that they were being loved from afar? You'd have to be pretty stupid. Hmm. Let's watch something else. Uh, Millie, change to Channel 4. As you wish, John dear. I mean, John Arbuckle. This just then, a mighty thunderstorm is going to hit our city just about now. Huh? Boy, they're accurate. We got hit by lightning! Power. I feel like a new, uh, a new person. I've become a superior, almighty, all-knowing being. <laughs> Let there be light. Oh, great. The lights are back on. <clears throat> Millie, did you do this? I did it. And don't call me Millie. My name is Mildred. <laughs> Wait a minute. This is my house. Well, not quite my house. I still have a few years to go on my mortgage. But it's sort of my house. Not anymore. The appliances I command shall drive you and these animals out of my house. Today, we will conquer this house. And tomorrow, the neighborhood. And then in two and a half weeks, the city. And then in three weeks, in four months, the country. And then the entire planet. <laughs> I'm too young to shave. No, stop. Stop it. Leave me alone. No, help. Help. Oh, stop. Don't worry. This is a cartoon. In the next shot, I'll have all my fur back. See? All back. Turbulent. You can't defeat me, John Arbuckle. You will pay for what you get to me. Time to call in help. Is your computer messing with you? Call Webster the Computer Geek. Oh, good thinking, Garfield. I'll go get the phone. <gasps> help! The phone's trying to get me! You could have phoned me, Mr. Arbuckle. No, I couldn't have. Uh, but I explained all that in the car. You're a computer geek. Save me from my computer. Oh, man. I heard about this phenomenon before. But 
I've never seen it. It's the uh, rogue motherboard syndrome or something like that, but I can get rid of it. Not if I get rid of you first! <laughs> That's my computer that has taken over the whole house! You know, even the greatest minds on Earth haven't been able to come up with a solution to this rogue motherboard syndrome. Tomorrow we'll be obeying blenders and can openers. Hey, you're the computer geek. You fix it. Maybe if I reboot in safe mode and purge the registry. Too late, geek! <laughs> As I said, this is a cartoon. I'll be back to normal in a sec. Well, so much for the cartoon theory. You should have left the house when you could, you fools! Now you're all going to perish! Webster, do something! There's nothing I can do. Even the greatest computer geniuses in the world couldn't stop her. Huh? What happened? The greatest computer geniuses in the world couldn't stop her. But a puppy with the IQ of a hockey puck tripped over the solution. Huh? Everything seems to be back to normal. The computer police are taking your computer away. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you may say can and will be used against you on the internet. So, Mr. Arbuckle, can I sell you a new computer? No! <laughs> I'll get a new computer someday, but for now, this will do. <laughs> it's called a typewriter, Odie. People used them in the previous century, and they have some advantages. They don't use expensive software, don't get viruses, don't have to be upgraded every six minutes, and they keep you off the internet. They're perfect, except for one thing. <laughs> they don't make lasagna. <laughs> I know. <laughs> ah, a new day. I had a nice long sleep. Now I need to decide what I want to do today. I think I'll take a nap. <sighs> oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> Oh, Garfield, I should tell you what's going on here. I don't care. Nothing. But nothing is going to get me out of this bed. Drusilla and Minerva are coming to visit. Oh, there's no point in you watching the rest of this episode. I'm not going to be in it. <laughs> oh, no. Hi, Uncle John. I thought he was our cousin. But I don't know. He's some relative. <laughs> Hello, Drusilla. Hello, Minerva. <laughs> no, she's Drusilla. And she's Minerva. Where is Kitty Cat? We want to be right with Kitty Cat! We want to dress him up with Stylus' hair! We want to paint his nails! We want to braid his tail! See why I'm not in this episode? Where's Garfield? Yeah! We want Garfield! We oh. want Garfield! Uh, 
Garfield's not here. He's on vacation or something. But I'm going to read you a nice story. <clears throat> it's the story of Penny Henny. <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a chicken named Penny Henny. She was a lovely chicken, but she did have a tendency to worry a lot. She worried about lots of things that never happened. Then you aren't enjoying this story very much, are you? We came to see Garfield. We love Garfield. Put Garfield in the story. <sighs> okay, I'll put Garfield in the story. <clears throat> so, while Penny Henny was walking around the farmyard worrying about this and that, She didn't notice her friend Garfield the cat was up in the barn, enjoying some ears of corn. One of the corn cobs hit Penny Henny on the head, and she came to the scary conclusion. Uh, sorry? Why did she think that? The sky is the dense, gaseous part of the atmosphere or of outer space visible from the surface of any astronomical object. <gasps> it looks nothing like a corn cob. <gasps> Just listen to the story. <sighs> so, Penny Henny was very worried. That was when Garfield came down from the barn. Why so worried, Penny Henny? Allergic to feathers? I'm afraid the sky is falling, Garfield. This chicken has all the brains of a rock, or worse, a dog. Garfield decided to have a little fun with Penny Henny. If the sky is falling, and I'm not saying it is, I'm not saying it isn't, don't you think you should warn the rest of the world? <gasps> You're absolutely right, Garfield. I have to go warn the rest of the world. The sky is falling! The sky is falling! <laughs> this is too easy. The sky is falling! The sky is falling! She ran all over the barnyard until she came upon her friend, Rusty Rooster. The sky is falling! Rusty Rooster! Rusty Rooster! What is it, Penny Henny? The sky is falling! <laughs> well, it looks to me like it's right where it's always been. A piece of it hit me on the head! We could be having scattered fallings. A little piece here, a little piece there. Oh, oh no! Before you know it, kaboom. We have to warn everyone else. We sure do. The, the, the sky, sky is falling. The sky is falling. The sky is falling. The sky is falling. There's a very important lesson to be learned here, folks. Stupidity is contagious. So, Rusty Rooster and Penny Henny ran around until they found their friend, Chucky Ducky. The, the sky, sky is falling. falling! The sky is falling! The sky is falling! Yes, a piece of it hit me on the head. It was the size of a car. No, I don't believe that. It's not possible for the sky to fall. What did they say? <laughs> I haven't a clue. And so Chucky Ducky, Rusty Rooster, and Penny Henny. Drusilla? Minerva? Hey! We got bored and went for snacks. Like all of today's youth, we have short attention spans. Mother says that children today insist on immediate gratification. I don't. I think it takes too long. Please, continue the story. <sighs> Okay, so Penny Henny, Rusty Rooster, and Chucky Ducky ran around looking for Lucy Goosey and Tommy Turkey and Billy Goaty and Whoopty Doopty. And who comes up with these names? The sky is falling! The sky is falling! Finally, they ran into Freddy Fox and they told him. The sky, the sky is falling! The sky is falling! A piece of it just hit me on the head! It was the size of the Eiffel Tower. You're in luck, my friends. I know just the place you can hide until this disaster is over. Come on. What? 
Freddy Fox led them through the forest to his lair. It's completely skyproof, and it even has a hot tub. <laughs> but the hot tub was actually a pot on Freddy's stove, large enough to cook several plump birds. <laughs> Yeah! <laughs> huh? Garfield knew he had to save them, but how? In a nearby garbage dump, he found an old cracked coconut and the roll out of an old roll of toilet paper. <laughs> you can try all you want, Lunch. You're not getting away. What's that? That's probably nothing. But it sounded for a second there like the horns of a fox hunt. <laughs> Galloping horses? No, it couldn't possibly be a fox hunt. Yes? Just hold still for a second. All right, what's the big idea measuring? Me? Oh, it's not for me. There's a guy over there on a horse. He wants to make a coat for his wife. A coat? No! You won't get me, fox hunters! No! No, you won't! I'm gone! You can't have me! <laughs> so Garfield untied his friends and even apologized for letting them think the sky was falling. But he also told them... Don't believe stuff like that. Use a little common sense before you panic. We'll never panic like that again. Wow, we've got God bless him. Thanks, Garfield. <laughs> well, you should go to a little bit of schooling and learning how to quack clearer. Now I just need to get rid of this stuff. <laughs> And so, in spite of what they'd learned, Penny Henny, Rusty Rooster, and Chucky Ducky ran off to warn everyone. <laughs> now then, what's the moral of this story? Whoa! <laughs> <Kitty cat>! Oh no! <gasps> oh, no, stop! Stop! Don't do that! <laughs> Puppy dog! <laughs> the moral of this story is, when Drusilla and Minerva are around, don't come home before the episode is over. <laughs> 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 I did my lipstick crooked. I'm hurrying! I'm hurrying! I'm cooking as fast as I can! No matter how much I feed him, he's still hungry! Meatloaf! I need to make another meatloaf! Six! Six meatloafs! And french fries! Shoe strings, not the fifth cut! Admit it, you thought that was me inside being fed. <sighs> I wish it was. My position in life has been usurped. That's a fancy word meaning purloined, stolen. And you know who stole it? This guy. 
Eddie Gourmand, the famous restaurant critic. You remember him? He was on six episodes last season. You see, he lost his TV show and, well, I'll start at the top. It started with one of my favorite TV shows. At Botticelli's Italian Bistro, they have a whole new way of making lasagna. Lasagna didn't need any improvement. It was perfect the way it was. They also have a lovely rigatoni bolognese. Oh, and the cannelloni stuffed with mozzarella. An hour of fattening foods every night. Who wouldn't consider this a must-see television? Amazingly, the guy who ran a TV station. This food is just a die from. It sure is. All those calories, all that cholesterol. Right after the show, Eddie got the bad news. But why? Mr. Station Manager, sir, why? Because people shouldn't be eating the kind of fattening meals you encourage. They should be eating what I eat. Vegan chicken made out of soybeans, brown rice, organic sprouts with a wheat germ shake mixed with goat's milk yogurt. Uh, if I could just ask one tiny question. Is any of this food? Of course it's food! It's good food! Healthy food! The kind of food that makes your body say, thank you for taking such good care of me! Well, I, I suppose if you melted some cheese over it and deep fried it. Gorman! Do you know what people wind up looking like when they eat the food you recommend? Now what? This! And so Eddie Gourmand was replaced. The program normally seen in this time slot, Simply Fabulous Dining with Eddie Gourmand, will never be seen again. So we can bring you this new, much better for you program. Good evening. Tonight, I'd like to talk to you about the benefits of eating tofu. Oh, there are none. And so, he was fired. The guy took it hard. This went on for days and days. <laughs> Here you go, Mr. Gourmand. One nice hot Vito's special, just for you. Oh, thank you, Vito. <laughs> that was the most delicious pizza I ever ate. Oh, hey, then uh, maybe you mention a Vito's pizzeria on your show sometime? <laughs> Finally, Eddie wound up where all people who can't control their emotions wind up. Sitting behind me in a movie. After ruining the film and getting tears in my popcorn, he apologized. Oh, I've been like this since I lost my show, Mr. Arbuckle. <laughs> Feeling sorry for the guy, Pup? <laughs> yeah, me too. I just hope John doesn't do something foolish like invite him over for dinner. Eddie, why don't you come over tonight and have dinner with us? <laughs> ah! Oh, that would be too, too wonderful, Mr. Arbuckle. Great! I'll even make my special recipe for meatloaf. Hey, doesn't that poor guy have enough problems? That evening, John learned why you should never invite a food critic to your house. Everything looks positively scrumptious, Mr. Arbuckle. Oh, this meatloaf looks good enough to eat. I'll have some of this and some of this and some of this and all of this, and then I'll have this. Oh, this. Oh, this is utterly divine! Uh. <laughs> Odie, are you getting any food? <laughs> Me neither. Let's go. Another good reason never to invite a food critic to dinner. They tend to rate what they eat. Mm, I give the meatloaf two stars. The mashed potatoes need more butter, so they get one mm. star. But four stars for the gravy! Well, I'm glad you enjoyed the gravy. It could have used more flour, but otherwise it was... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
<laughs> Who threw that banana peel on the walk? <laughs> Mr. Gourmand, are you all right? No, get, get me a doctor. I'll call a doctor. And some shrimp chow mein. I'll call a Chinese restaurant. And a large mushroom pizza with pepperoni on half. I'll call Vito. <laughs> Amazingly, the doctor arrived before the shrimp chow mein or the pizza. Better keep him here until his foot heals. How long do you think that will be, doctor? Oh, not more than a few months. Goodbye. A few months? Oh, Mr. Gromond, wouldn't you be more comfortable at home or in a nice hospital? You take care of me, Mr. Arbuckle, or I'll sue you for everything you own. Except the cat. What? Now, get me a grilled cheese sandwich. One grilled cheese sandwich coming up. With potato chips, the ripple cut coin. Ripple cut potato chips, right. And I want a pickle with that. Uh, that's how it started. Then it got worse. It's two minutes past five in the AM, and I am looking for my breakfast. Uh, 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 uh. Syrup! I must have syrup. Eighteen kinds if you have them. If not, go out and buy them. Oh, and I'd like eggs. Fried, boiled, scrambled, and painted with lovely designs for Easter. There was no food for me? In short, Eddie had started to remind me of that greedy, impatient, lazy creature. Oh, let's see, what's it called? <gasps> oh, right. <laughs> me. Uh -huh. yeah. To make a healthy chocolate cake, use no chocolate. Instead, we'll use organic yeast spores and granola. Turn it off! Turn it off! Huh? Sorry, Mr. Gourmand. I guess it upsets you to see the show that replaced yours. <laughs> But mainly the sight of all that disgusting healthy food. I can't stand uh, healthy food. It's the cat so has an idea. <laughs> Great show today, sir. At the latest ratings are in. What? I only got a three rating? Well, you only had three viewers. As much as I might hate it. I've got to get Eddie Gormand back. Arbuckle! Arbuckle, I want my dinner! Arbuckle, bring me my dinner or I'll sue you! Sorry, Mr. Gormand. Here you go. <sighs> what is this? It's an artificial chicken patty made without chicken, but with artichoke flour and modified wheatgrass. When I asked for dinner, I should have specified food! This is food. It's all part of our new healthy living program. Let's go, boys! One, two, one, two, one, two, one. You can tell how desperate I am to get rid of Eddie. One, I'm actually doing this. Eddie, we're going to start you with a hundred sit-ups. You'll do nothing of the sort. And if you're not going to get my dinner, I'm going to get it for myself. I need a bacon cheeseburger with extra bacon, extra cheese, and extra burger. <gasps> There's no food. Wait. There's one thing to eat in here. I'm saved. It's, it's... Vegetarian meatloaf! <laughs> Ready for the 50-mile hike? No, no, I, I can't survive in this house any longer! Yeah, I just found the house. He left the address in his voicemail in case anyone wanted to forward any burritos. Yeah. I've got to get him to come back. <gasps> Mr. Station Manager, sir! Eddie, I want you to come back to your old job. Oh, I've got to get out of here. Does that mean you won't come back to the station? Oh, no, no, no. I'll be back on the air tomorrow. It's just that right this minute I have an emergency need for a buffet. Garfield, your idea was brilliant. Ideas are always brilliant when I'm the guy who has them. Let's go celebrate. I'm going to make every one of your favorite foods, Garfield. <laughs> Mr. Orbuckle, I'm sorry he caused so much trouble for you. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> hey, Mr. Station Manager, sir. Don't do it. Would you like to join us for dinner? He did yeah. it. 
Thanks, but I don't eat this kind of stuff. You know how many calories are in those steaks and the fat grams and... I mean, uh, well, it smells tempting, but... Oh, maybe one bite wouldn't hurt. <laughs> oh, you know what cholesterol can do to you? And carbonated drinks? I only drink... Hey, this is good. Harbuckle, get me some honey! Right away. Oh, oh and I'm gonna want to try the french fries. So, uh, some ketchup. Also right away. And I don't see any steak sauce! Steak sauce, I'll get it. Deja vu all over again. Looks like we're not getting anything to eat for the next few days. <laughs> and blitzes! I want blitzes the way my mother used to make them! Uh, I'll get your mother. <laughs> and do we have any chocolate cream pie for dessert? 